Welcome to Happy Hour. I'm Crystal and thanks for hanging out with me. I'm just drinking water today because I'm actually on my way somewhere so I'm being responsible and all that. So if you are new to my channel then welcome. I would love it if you would subscribe and if you enjoy this video then please give it a big thumbs up because that would also be fantastic. And otherwise just grab your favorite snack or beverage and let's get started. So what I'm bringing to you today is actually my favorites uh, and you know stuff that I used up and all that kind of stuff for actually the last couple of months. Um, I didn't do one of these for April and March, I had to think about that for a second, uh, out of laziness and got busy and all that kind of stuff. So um, my favorites are just kind of for the month of May but my empties and other stuff is uh, an accumulation over the last couple of months. So I'm calling this the good, the bad, and the empty. So we're gonna start off with the good. And um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is these shoes that I recently bought. Um, I actually bought them a couple of months ago while it was still like super cold and snowy and all that shit, um, anticipating spring weather that would finally eventually come. So now I can wear them and um, they're just really cute. I've been getting a lot of compliments when I wear them. They're pretty simple shoes. I mean, you can see they're just, they're flat. So there's nothing like, you know, super high um, end about them, I guess you could say. Uh, I also got them on sale for way cheaper than they normally would be at TJ Maxx. So I got lucky with these. Anyway, I've been really happy with them. They're comfy and cute and that's all you can ask for. The next thing is this hairspray. It's a sea salt spray from Davines or Davines or I just don't know how they say that. But anyway, it's one of those sea salt texturing spray thingies and um, I like this one better than the Bumble and Bumble one. I feel like this does a better job like in terms of the, the way that, it, the, I don't know, the, just the way that it puts stuff in my hair I like better and it really, really smells great. Um, I don't know how to describe what it smells like. I'm gonna try to, mm, I don't know. It just, it smells really great. <laughs> um, so if you have the chance to smell this anywhere, whether you buy it or not, I would say smell it. Um, I got this from, I wanna say I got it off Birchbox's website, um, but I'm sure you could get it off like, they have their own website, davinus.com. Or uh, you could probably get it on Amazon too, but anyway big fan of this. It's really awesome. Next is my rediscovery of this mascara, which is the Lash Blast Volume in the waterproof version from CoverGirl. Um, I used this mascara years ago and um, I kind of found, and, and this is still true to this day, that it was making, like, it was smudging under my lower lash line. And at the time, because like I said, it was years ago, I blamed it on the mascara. Now, as it turns out, it's just like, it's just how things work for me. Like, I can't find a mascara that doesn't smudge under my lower lash line. And fortunately, I've just kind of started to accept it. Um, it's almost like one of those things that, you know, like you can't do anything about it. It's like the fact that I'm super short. Like, you can't do anything about it. Just accept it. So. Mascara smudges for me, but what I like about this is that it's not super wet. So, cause you know how some mascaras are like so wet that it's like you can't touch your eyes for, or not touch your eyes, but you know what I mean? Like you can't blink or anything for like three days it seems like. So it's not super wet, but I really like the wand on it. Um, it's a little, like it's not very unusual, but you can see, kind of see what it looks like there. Um, it's just like, you know, it's a nice texture. It's not, um, I don't know if it's traditional bristles, like it, it feels more like it's the plasticky ones, but because it's so fat, it really kind of works out for me. So I really like that about it. Um, uh, another big plus is that because it's CoverGirl, it's drugstore, so it's super cheap. It's like $6 a tube. Um, so when I get mad at it for smudging, I don't feel like at least I just wasted $30 on a mascara that smudged. The final thing in my favorites part of this video is a twofer. Um, so first of all, it is this this Makeup Forever tin palette. Um, this is just like a like a your typical Z palette or whatever, but it isn't a Z palette. Obviously, it's from Makeup Forever. Um, you can get these on 
Sometimes you can get them on Sephora's website if they're not sold out. I got mine directly from MakeupForever.com. Um, I heard about these watching Kathleen Lights, actually. Um, she mentioned that she got these, and they're, so you can get, this one is like, it's not the biggest one you can get, I think it's the second largest, but it's like $15 for this whole thing. Um, anyway, so that's the first part of my favorite thing, is I just love this. I bought like three or four of them, um, cause they're just really handy, and Z palettes are so expensive. I know with the Z palette you need to see through the top of it, which, I mean, I don't know, that's good, but at the same time, like, I can label what's in here, like, I don't need to look through it, you know? You open it up, and the bottom half is where the, the actual magnet is. You really could put a magnet in this top half if you wanted to and double the size of this. Uh, I don't like to do that because I'm kind of messy. This, these shadows aren't in bad shape right now, but in a general sense, I'm pretty messy, so I will get, like, when I use both sides of something like this, then shatteriness gets all over everything like they get mixed up and it's not great so i don't do that um anyway the second half of the favorites of this is just it's the shadows that are in here if i don't drop this on the floor let me turn it upside down so um this is you can just ignore that it's i like it too but it's not part of my favorites um anyway all these shadows in here are the new sh newest shadows from makeup geek it is the the new stuff that they launched um I wanna say like in April maybe is when they launch these. Anyway, um, it's kind of hard to tell. I have used quite a few of these and quite a, quite a bit actually, and I actually have um, some of it is on my eyes today. Um, but I just really, you guys know I'm a fan of Makeup Geek. I have talked before about how much I like them. And uh, these shadows are no different. They're great quality and they're great colors. Um, some of these colors, were available only in like their their Vegas palette um which was kind of like a limited edition thing they came out with them in their permanent line and um so I just bought all of these in one bundle because you can, they're cheaper that way uh also I just knew that I was gonna want them so you might as well just bite the bullet uh anyway uh every single one that I have used which is most of them at this point big fan of so they are also my favorites and I've gotten a lot of compliments in wearing them okay so now I'm gonna move on to the bad um, I don't have a lot in here that I considered bad but I do have a few things and the first thing is this little guide thingy um, to do like shadow and eyeliner um, from elf it's supposed to so it's a mascara and shadow shield um, and I liked the idea of it. It seems simple, like it's on this, you know, like a normal brush thingy, and then it's just this plastic part that has a bit that goes under your eye, and then another bit that goes like along the edge. So this goes under your eye, and then this goes on the edge, and it's supposed to like both shield your under eye and be kind of like a guide, like if you wanted to do, um, you know, like kind of a winged liner sort of, but it's, you know, it's a little bit curved. Anyway, um, like I said, I really loved the idea of it, but first of all, in order to to make it work, you have to do it like this on one eye, and you have to flip it over on the other, because it's, obviously it's not universal. And that meant for me, because I'm a little bit messy, like I'll admit, like I need a shadow guard because I'm messy. So like this side works fine, let's say I'm doing that side first, um, in terms of keeping the shadow off my under eye, but then you flip it over and you've got stuff under here. So like, I, w I forgot to clean it off and then it was like a bigger mess than it was before. So that's not necessarily the fault of the product other than this plastic here is kind of sticky, but not sticky enough. Like you can't put it on your eye and actually have it like stay. See, it falls off. So it's not sticky enough to stay put, which means I'm using one eye or one, one eye. That's not the word I meant. Um, I'm using one hand to hold it this whole time and that doesn't always work great. Like, sometimes you need both hands. I mean, I know it probably, like, you don't think about it until you're trying to use one hand to hold this thing and you're like, shit, I needed that hand to apply my makeup. Anyway, so there's that and I just threw it on the floor. So because it's sticky enough that shadow sticks to it, um, I also didn't, I mean, I feel like to get it to work right, I have to stick it so far up that it just like, it's tickling me, it doesn't feel good. And then this being like 
curved here instead of more of like a flat line for a wing. Just didn't work for me. I'm sure that this works great for some people, but I'm just not one of them. So I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Maybe give it to the dog and they'll chew it up in five seconds, who knows. Uh, the next thing that just didn't kind of work out for me was this glycolic hand scrub from Julep. Um, admittedly, I've had this for a while. Like I, this doesn't have an expiration date on it, but I'm positive that I've had this for a couple of years. But the reason that I've had it for a couple of years is that it's so it's supposed to be essentially like an exfoliating thing for your hands. Um, it's got little exfoliant beads and uh, I was gonna say what they are, but it doesn't say what they're made out of other than it's oh it's glycolic acid and apricot seeds and so it just like I feel like it um it didn't mesh well together so it it you know usually when you have like a uh one of those hand hand soaps that has little micro beads or whatever in it you know they they stay suspended in there or whatever so like you you pump it out and it comes out this wasn't that way like if i didn't remember to shake it up every time i was going to use it then i would just get like a handful of goo and and the actual exfoliating part would stay in the tube um so that wasn't great and then i also just didn't really feel like it was doing anything it's you know it's supposed to make your hands smoother and noticeably younger looking and i didn't feel like it did any of that so, um, it's not empty and I'm not going to finish it. Next up is a really, this is so disappointing to me that I have to put this in my bad list because, sorry, the dog just bumped the table where the camera's sitting, so it went all shaky. Anyway, so I really, really wanted to use this brush. This is the must have large powder brush number 30 from Sephora. Um, so this was not an inexpensive brush. This, I mean, Sephora brushes are not obviously like the most expensive brushes you can buy, but they're not cheap. Like they, uh, this brush was probably at least $30. Um, anyway, what I found with this brush is that it's not soft. So I'm one of the, those kinds of people that I actually do use a brush like this to bronze up my neck and like my decollete area and stuff like that. The reason being that, um, you know, I, I don't like to self tan in, in this area. I feel like, um, you know, self tanner just feel, it gets weird on my, like on this area because I put like a lot of sunscreen and stuff. So I prefer to use bronzer and have it kind of meld with my face. So I do that all the time. Like every day that I wear bronzer, I do that on, on that area. So I do have need for a large powder brush, um, which is why I have this obviously. But what I found was that first of all, this thing sheds like a mofo. Like every time I use it, I would have little, like they're even coming out now and I haven't used this. See, one just came out. Like I haven't used this in weeks and it's not like I didn't take good care of it when I was using it. You know, I would wash it. You can see it's pretty clean. It's not like this is a filthy brush. I would wash it as regularly as I would wash my other brushes, which is not like every day, but still plenty regularly. I didn't dry it poorly, you know, I drew, would have it dry, air dry, like on an angle like this so it didn't get in the glue. So there's l like no reason that things should be, like it should be shedding, but it is. Like I can just sit here and I move my hand across it and an another one like comes off. So not only would it put fur all over me, which I don't need uh, cause I have five pets, so I have plenty of fur floating around, but it also is just not very soft, which I think maybe, and so to, to use it on your hands or like brush it like this, it feels soft. It's not though, like it's just not, when I use it on me, it just does not like, maybe it's the bits that are coming out or something, I don't know. But in any case, I, I used this brush for a good couple of years and finally just bit the bullet and decided to get rid of it. Um, so I'm just, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I may give it to somebody or I may just throw it away because it's really just, I'd feel guilty giving it to someone, honestly. So the final thing in my bad section is this nighttime moisturizer from Sephora. So this is their Total Age Defy Night Cream, more beautiful day after day. Um, so this is also actually empty um, for the most part. Like you can see inside of there, like I basically used all of it. Um, so there are a couple reasons that I put this in my bad list, but I still finished it. First of all, um, 
I didn't, I don't know, I just wanted to use it up. Basically, like, that's why I finished it. But this is not the first time I've purchased this product. Um, I've purchased it before, and I really, really loved it. So, without even thinking about it, because why would you, um, I bought, you know, another, another tub of it. Um, this is probably either my second or third, I can't remember. Anyway, somewhere along the way, they changed the formula, but didn't actually say, like, on Sephora's website. It never said, like, new formula. You know, usually when, when a company reformulates something, they tell you, and they did not with this. The way that I found it out was that, you know, I used my other one up, I get into this one, and first of all, it was a different color. Um, it was, like, it had a yellowish hue to it. Um, second, it smelled different and not in a good way. And then third, it just didn't feel like it was, it didn't feel the same. You know, you put it on and it just felt different. Um, so at first I thought, well, maybe I got a bad jar. Like, that's possible. Um, and so I thought I would return it, but then I started looking on Sephora's website just out of curiosity. Um, it's one of, the, one of those things you do when you're up too late at night. And noticed that a bunch of people had given it bad reviews in the semi-recent future. So, um, everyone was saying the same thing that I was saying about it. Uh, so, that's basically how I... F I didn't ever, I guess, officially confirm that they reformulated, but everyone else was saying the same things and everybody else was like, it feels like they reformulated. Because it used to be fantastic. I used to love, like, the original version of this, or I don't know if it was original necessarily, but from several years ago, I loved that version. Um, so now it's a fail for me, especially because, I mean, even though this is Sephora's brand, so it's not as expensive the, as the other stuff that you get at Sephora, this is still like, I want to say it's like $30 for this thing, um, which is part of why I finished it, because I was like, I'm not going to pay that much money and then not finish the damn thing. But in any case, I didn't love it, and I'm not gonna be buying it again. Huh. So on to my empties, and I have this big, like, tub here full, bin, whatever you wanna call it. Um, we'll go through these pretty fast, because a lot of them are repeats that y'all have seen before. So, first thing up is this uh, container for baby wipes. Um, like many of you, I'm sure, like, I use baby wipes to wipe swatches off, or, um, you know, like sometimes in the morning when I'm getting ready, I'll like run something on my hand first and then I'll clean it off with a baby wipe, whatever. Uh, next up, I have a couple of bags of cotton rounds because uh, I go through these like crazy. Um, a couple of containers or bags or whatever you want to say of these simple face fa facial wipes. Um, I actually like these a lot. I thought I had run out of them, but then when I was unpacking, because I slowly unpack, I don't unpack with any speed. Um, so I found these when I was unpacking, used them up. Um, I would continue to use them, it's just that the, the ones that I get from Costco are a lot cheaper, so I use those instead. Uh, next was this sample that I got when I bought the Rainforest of the Sea stuff from Tarte. Um, this was a sample of their cleansing gel. I got probably two uses out of it. Uh, I liked it fine, but when I went to look at how much the, the cleanser actually cost, it was like, meh, it's not worth whatever it is, because I don't remember what it was, but it wasn't worth what it was going to cost me. I have these Deep Puff iPads, which I have talked about before. They work okay on me, but I don't love them. I got them as a sample. I just threw the, the wrapper on the floor because I'm lazy and like that. But um, I got them as a sample in like one of my in birch box or something like that. Um, so at least I didn't like seek them out and pay for them. But I'm not going to go and get them myself. Um, next is my favorite toner. Um, I think... I thought I had another bottle of toner in here, but it turns out that I don't. Oh, I know why. So. I, this is my favorite toner, but they stopped carrying it on subscribe and save on Amazon. So I was like, shit, I'm going to have to get something else. And I preferred to do it subscribe and save because I'm lazy and you know, it just works out that way. Plus like I forget to like pick stuff like this up at the store unless I'm actually on the aisle that it comes on. Anyway, I tried a different cleanser or toner and it broke me out. Like not in a, an, acne breakout in like a, I had a full on allergic reaction. Like I had red bumps all over my whole face, my neck, my 
back even like I didn't even put the toner on my back and it still broke it out anyway it was like it, every single pore on my face in like especially my cheek areas was uh, like looked like a, a little teeny tiny pimple and they weren't all connected so it wasn't like a big blister or something but every single one of them it's like I had a poor party and it was not great anyway that was not this toner but that lesson made me decide to go back to this toner come hell or high water uh, luckily I found out that you can get this through targets subscribe and save whatever they call that thing so that's how I get it now uh, the next thing is this foaming bath from Dr. Teal's I have had a, a jar of this on an empties before um, this is a different scent. This is the one with lavender instead of the other one that has like mint and stuff in it. I like this a lot. I will purchase it again um, and I, I get this stuff at Target. Or you can get it at Ulta as well. Next up is this little tub here um, that was this, uh, like a sample of a, a More Pacific Moisture Bound Rejuvenating Cream. Um, this was fine. It smells really good. Like it smells I can still, there's like a little bit of residue in here. It smells so good, I love it. Um, but it is really expensive moisturizer and I felt like for the cost of it, it wasn't necessarily worthwhile. Um, but I did like it. Next empty, there's actually like, I can hear a tiny bit left in here, but not, I couldn't get any more out like to spray on my head. Anyway, this is a leave-in conditioner, yeah, conditioner, I guess you could say, a leave-in spray from N4 or number four, I think is how they say it. Uh, I got this as a sample in one of my subscription boxes and I did not like this. Um, it worked fine on my hair, but it smells horrible. Like, really, really awful. It's just not, not a good smell. And I think this is supposed to be like a natural kind of thing. I could be making something up. Um, it, so it's, yeah, it's like, it's got, it's 100% vegan, gluten-free, sulfate and sodium, chloride-free, paraben-free, and it's available at fine spas and salons. And the reason that it is all of those things is because it smells like shit. Like, it's horrible. Um, like I said, it works fine for your hair, but it does not smell good. Um, next up is this Batiste dry shampoo. Uh, I like this fine. I don't actually love the original scent. I may try one of their other ones, but Batiste is... It's a good all-around dry shampoo. Um, this is another spray-on leave-in conditioner thingy. Um, I really actually like this a lot. This one smells kind of like apples. It's, it smells really good. It's from Not Your Mother's Hair Care. Um, but I won't be buying this again. So I did pay for this. This is a travel size. Uh, I won't be buying this again because it's not a, it's not actually a protectant in terms of like against UV and heat and that kind of thing. Um, so I probably won't be buying this again. I may look for another one like this that, um, from this brand that, that has a heat protectant, um, but I haven't as of yet. Next up is this, um, this Blink mascara. Um, I really like Blink in terms of a mascara because it's not like painting your lashes, it's tubing them. Um, this stuff just started, it started to dry out and I don't know how long I used it, probably longer than you're supposed to. Um, but I have other tubes of it and I will continue to use it. Uh, this is another of those Amore Pacific things, but this is an eye cream instead of uh, like a, a moisturizer. Um, again, liked it fine but it's just it was too expensive and i i mean as far as an eye cream goes like it i didn't feel like it did so it's supposed to hydrate and fortify the skin against premature aging i didn't feel like it was that fantastic in terms of doing any of those things and next up is a shitload of sheet mask empties um these are probably the last of sheet masks that you're going to see for a while because since it's um summertime now my skin just doesn't dry out like it does in the winter, so I don't sheet mask very often. Um, also, you can see that this one got stolen by my dog and he tried to eat part of it, so that's fun. <laughs> We're almost done, I promise. Um, so next is this really disgusting, because it was in my shower for who knows how long, um, body scrub. I had to, God, I blinked on that for a second. Um, it is from the Tree Hut. It's the Shea Sugar Scrub in the scent almond and honey and sorry I'm having a hard time reading it because like the top is so disgusting 
from being in the shower for ages. Uh, I like this stuff. I will continue to buy it. I actually get this on subscribe and save from Amazon. Um, it's my favorite body scrub. It smells really good. It feels really good. Next is my favorite sunscreen. Um, I have talked about before my usage of SPF. I, I use SPF every single day, even in the winter time. Um, this is the one that I use every day and it has taken me a long time to come to this one and have it be my favorite. 